Hi, in this video we will discuss GPAT 2018 questions from organic chemistry. So first question, which of the following definitions of an asymmetric reaction is the most accurate? Options are A. A reaction that creates a new chiral center in the product. So here the product is chiral. Option B. A reaction that involves a chiral reagent. So here the reagent is chiral. Option C. A reaction which creates a new chiral center with selectivity for one enantiomer or diastereomer over another. So this indicates it produces two optical isomers. One is the major and the other one is the minor. And option D. A reaction that is carried out on an asymmetric starting material. So if we simplify the options, A indicates the product is chiral, B indicates the reagent is chiral and C indicates the product is chiral with either enantiomer or diastereomeric pairs. One is forming as a major and the other one is forming as minor. And D indicates the starting material is chiral. So here the correct answer is option C. A reaction which creates a new chiral center with selectivity for one enantiomer or diastereomer over another. So let us see the explanation. So let us see first of all what is the asymmetric reaction. What is asymmetric reaction? So let us take a staldehyde. Now a staldehyde is optically inactive. It is not having any chiral carbon. So suppose it is undergoing a reaction with a cyanide and undergoing the nucleophilic addition reaction. It can give the two products with two configurations. And you can see both of these structures are having the chiral carbon. So both of these structures are optically active. And these are the mirror image of each other. So these are the optical isomers and these are the enantiomers. But here one is formed as the major product and another is formed as the minor product. Such a reaction which produces a new chiral center with either enantiomers or diastereomers as the products with one being the major product and another being the minor product. That reaction what we call asymmetric reaction. Right. So the option C is the right answer for the given question. Let us go to the next question. What software program is used to determine the Verloop steric parameter in QSAR? Options are A. Alchemy and B. Chem3D and C. Sterimol and D. Chemdra. So QSAR, Quantitative Structural Activity Relationships. So in this, the steric parameters can be obtained by Verloop steric parameter. The Verloop steric parameter measures the steric effect in binding of the drug to the receptor. So it measures the various parameters like the bond angles, bond length and van der Waal forces between the drug and receptor which will affect its steric binding. So for such type of study, Sterimol is one of the software that is going to be used. Next question. Appropriate hybridization schemes for the C atoms in the molecule CH3CO2H are option A sp3 and sp and option B sp3 and sp2 and option C sp2 and sp and option D sp3 and sp3. So here the right answer is option B sp3 and sp2. Let us see the explanation. CH3CO2H which is nothing but acetic acid. It is having the two carbons. One is a CH3 carbon, second is a COOH carbon. And if you observe, the CH3 carbon is having three sigma bonds attached to the hydrogen and one sigma bond attached to the carbon. So totally it is having four sigma bonds. So hence it is sp3 hybridized. Now let us see the carboxylic acid carbon. It is having a sigma bond with one carbon and another sigma bond with OH oxygen and another sigma bond with the carbonyl oxygen and a pi bond with the carbonyl oxygen. So it is having three sigma bonds and one pi bond. So it is sp2 hybridized. In a simple way, if a carbon is attached to one pi bond, sp2 hybridized, two pi bonds, sp hybridized and no pi bond, sp3 hybridized.
Now let us go to the next question. Which statement regarding the Huckel's rule is false? Option A. There must be 4n plus 2 pi electrons. Option B. The molecule must be planar. Option C. The molecule must be cyclic. And option D. Each of the pi electrons must be associated with a conjugated double bond. So here the false statement is option D. So D is the answer for this question. Let us see the explanation. What is Huckel's rule? It gives the requirements for the aromaticity. In a simple statement, we can define the Huckel's rule as uninterrupted pi cloud above and below the plane with odd number of pi electron pairs. You can see uninterrupted that is continuous pi cloud is there which is above and below the plane with odd number of pi electrons that is 2n plus 1 pi electron pairs. So it should be cyclic, it should be planar and it should have conjugated double bonds which, which gives the uninterrupted pi cloud and it should have 2n plus 1 pi pairs otherwise 4n plus 2 pi electrons. So these are the requirements for a compound to obey Huckel's rule. And for a conjugated double bonds, each pi electron should be associated with an adjacent single bond, not with a double bond. So if you see the question again, option 1, the there must be 4n plus 2 pi electrons, that is true. Molecules must be planar, that is again true. The molecule must be cyclic, that again true. And each of the pi electron must be associated with a conjugated double bond, that is false. So if you take the case of benzene, benzene is having the pi electrons which are conjugated with a single bond. So pi bond should be conjugated with a single bond, not with a double bond. So the D is the false statement and answer for this question. So let us go to the next question. Anthracene is isomeric with options are A. Phenanthrene, B. Naphthalene and C. Benzene and D. Azulene. So here the right answer is phenanthrene. So let us see the structures of the compounds given in as the options. First one is benzene and second one naphthalene and third azulene and fourth phenanthrene and fifth anthracene. And you can easily see here phenanthrene and anthracene are the two isomeric compounds having three aromatic rings. Next question. The molecular formula of the phenanthrene is again one more question on the aromatic ring systems. A. C14H10 B. C12H10 C. C14H14 and D. C14H18 So here the right answer is C14H10 So let us start with the benzene. Benzene is having a molecular formula C6H6. When an extra ring is going to be added, what happens to this molecular formula? For every extra ring, two carbons are lost in the fusion. So loss on fusion is minus 2 and carbons that is going to be added are 4 and hydrogen again added are 4. So total change in the molecular formula is C4H2. So if we add the C4H2 to the, the C6H6, we will get the added number of rings and their molecular formula. So naphthalene, now it is having a molecular formula of C10H8 and phenanthrene is having a molecular formula of C14H10. So phenanthrene has showing C14H10 as the molecular formula is the right answer for the given question. Next question, in electrophilic substitution of the pyridine, Reaction of pyridine with hydrogen peroxide in acetic acid leads to the formation of A. 1,4-dihydropyridine B. 2-hydroxypyridine and C. 2-pyridone and D. Pyridine N-oxide So here the right answer is pyridine N-oxide So let us take the pyridine Now this pyridine is reacted with hydrogen peroxide So it gives pyridine N oxide. Now this pyridine N oxide is a more electrophilic in nature so it is more reactive than the pyridine. Let us see the next question. 
which compound is most basic? Options are A. Pyridine B. Pyrrole C. Pyrrolidine and D. Imidazole So here the right answer is C. Pyrrolidine Basicity is directly proportional to the stability of its conjugate acid. If its conjugate acid is more stable, the corresponding base is a strong base. So if you take the pyrrole compared with the pyridine and let us take their conjugate acids. Pyrrole on addition of the proton, it is given the pyrrolinium ion and pyridine, pyridinium ion. And you can easily observe that pyrrole loses the electron pair so it loses the aromaticity hence less stable but the pyridine even by losing the electron pair but still does not lose the aromaticity so since aromaticity is preserved it is more stable so pyridine is more basic than the pyrrole now let us compare pyridine with the imidazole again they are forming their conjugate acids and if you see imidazole as well as pyridine both preserve the resonance or aromaticity even they are forming the conjugate acid. So here aromaticity is not producing any difference in their basicity. But if you see the imidazole is having the two nitrogens. So what are the positive charge formed on the imidazole can be delocalized on the another nitrogen. So, positive charge is not delocalized in the pyridinium ion, but it is going to be more delocalized in the imidazolium ion. So, imidazole is uh, forming a stable conjugate acid. So, imidazole is more basic than pyridine. Finally, we will compare imidazole and pyrrolidine. So, imidazole is forming its conjugate acid and pyrrolidine is again forming its conjugate acid. Now, Pyrrolidine is having the delocalization of the positive charge because of the positive inductive effect of the adjacent carbons which are sp3 hybridized. So this causes the pumping of the electrons towards the nitrogen which decreases the positive charge and increases the stability of the conjugate acid. On the other hand in the imidazole Due to unsaturation, the adsent carbon is sp2 hybridized, so it cannot pump the electron, so it cannot stabilize the whatever the positive ion on the nitrogen. So you here you have to remember that inductive effect plays more role than the residence in this case. So pyrrolidine forms a more stable conjugate acid than the imidazole. So pyrrolidine is more basic than imidazole. Finally, concluding the order of basicity, pyrrolidine is greater than imidazole is greater than pyridine is greater than pyrrole. So, pyrrolidine is highest basic and pyrrole is the least basic in these four compounds. Now, let us go to the next question. Correct nomenclature for the following bridged bicyclic ring system is Option A. Bicyclo 4.4.0 decane Option B. Bicyclo 4.3.0 decane and option C Bicyclo 4.3.1 decane and option D Bicyclo 4.4.1 decane So the right answer is Bicyclo 4.3.1 decane So let us see the explanation how we can give the naming for bicyclo compounds So in this structure first of all let us identify the bridge heads So here is one bridge head and here is another bridge hatch. These are the carbons which are involved in the fusion of the two rings. These are called bridge hatches. And let us give the numbering from the carbon adds into the bridge hatches on one side of the ring. So 1, 2, 3 and 4. Similarly, let us give the numbering on the other side of the bridge hatches. 1, 2 and 3. And one more carbon is there in between the bridge heads which is given by number 1. So total number of the carbons in the molecule is 4 plus 3 plus 1 plus 2. The last 2 is nothing but the bridge heads. So total number of carbons is 10. Hence the name is decane. Now 4 carbons are there on one side of the bridge heads 
and three carbons are there on the other side of the bridge heads and one carbon is there in between the bridge heads. So the naming is bicyclo 4.3.1 decane. So that is the answer for this question. Now let us go to the next question. Which among the following correctly defines diastereomer? Options are A. These have same magnitude but different signs of optical rotation. B. Non-superimposable object mirror relationship. And C. These differ in all physical properties. And D. Separation is very difficult. So here the right answer is option C. These differ in all physical properties so they can be easily separated. And if you observe option A, B and D are suitable for the enantiomers. So what is diastereomer? Diastereomers are the optical isomers which are not mirror images. So therefore they are non-superimposable. But they have different physical properties so they can be separated very easily. On the other hand, enantiomers are the optical isomers which are the mirror images, non-superimposable and identical physical properties so they cannot be separated easily. So here the right answer for the diastereomer feature is it is having different physical properties. Next question. Galactose and glucose are Option A. Epimers Option B. Enomers Option C. Isomers and Option D. Ketose aldose isomers So here the right answer is Epimers So if you see here two structures are presented one is the glucose and second is the galactose If you observe the configuration of the fourth portion OH group is on the right side in the glucose and left side in the galactose. And the configuration in the, at the rest of the all carbons is identical in both of the structures. So those structures which have equal configuration at all carbons except one carbon they are called as epimers. So here glucose and galactose are the C4 epimers. Next question. Which among the following is a non-essential amino acid? Options are A. Lysine B. Threonine C. Serine and D. Histidine So serine is a non-essential amino acid. Next question. Which of the following is a 3,3 sigma tropic reaction which converts a 1,5 diene to an isomeric 1,5 diene? Options are Cope rearrangement, B. Claisen rearrangement, C. Photochemical 2 plus 2 reaction, and D. Diels Alder reaction. So here the right answer is Cope rearrangement. What is Cope rearrangement? So let us take a diene. So let us give the numbering to this structure 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. So it is a 1,5 diene. So the name of this structure is 3 alkyl 1,5 diene. Suppose if this structure is going to be rearranged by breaking of the bond between third and fourth carbon and closing of the bond between first and sixth carbon, a new product is going to be formed. Now let us give the numbering for the product 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Now it is also a 1,5 diene. But the name of this compound is 1-alkyl 1,5-diene. So simply what happened? The ring is going to be rearranged to form a 1,5-diene with third alkyl group to the first alkyl group. Here if you observe the bond is going to be open at the third and fourth carbon. So how many number of carbons or atoms are there above this breaking of the bond? That is 3 atoms. Similarly, below this breaking of this bond, there is again 3 atoms. So, this rearrangement is called as 3, 3 rearrangement. This is a one type of cope rearrangement where it forms a 2 isomeric 1,5 dienes by breaking of one bond and forming of another bond where the ring is going to be rearranged. 
Thank you for watching this video.